everyone. Let me take you through a quick imagination today. Imagine waking up one fine morning to find out that the road you took daily to work has been blocked due to some construction happening. What would be your immediate reaction? Frustrated? Slightly anxious? Whether you're going to make it on time to work today or no? And immediately, what would you do? You would immediately want to reroute using your GPS. And as you navigate through the unfamiliar streets, you are totally anxious, and this, there's a feeling of excitement along with apprehension whether you're going to make it on time today, whether this is the actual path, or am I on a wrong path? Is this route slower or faster than the usual route? And as you navigate through the streets again, you notice that how the brain responds to these sudden, unexpected changes. Initially, there's a surge of stress as the brain's default mode network is grappling already with the disruption of the usual routine. And then something interesting happens. The brain's salience network takes charge and starts scanning the environment for some familiarity, some cues something which will make you adapt to the environment in a much better way. And you continue to navigate through these new and unfamiliar streets. And each time you take a turn, the brain is already scanning. And once you start finding some familiar cues and street signals, some landmarks, your brain starts rewarding you dopamine and the brain's dopamine starts subsiding the anxiety. This is exactly what is happening inside the brain whenever it is faced with some unexpected and sudden changes. And as you go along, gradually, once the anxiety has subsided, the brain's dopamine has rewarded you reach your destination and you suddenly feel so accomplished, as if you've really achieved something big. Despite the fact that initial discomfort of change really took you off. And then the change becomes a part of you. You start settling within it. Heraclitus rightly mentioned, change is the on only constant in life. So any which ways you cannot avoid it. And when you reflect on this experience, you realize that change, however daunting it could be, but it is a great opportunity for learning and discovery, and also growth. I want you to reflect, there could be some time in your life when you wanted to make a change in your lifestyle, or probably you wanted to change some habit, what is it that you were going through then? Generally, the brain and the different parts of the brain have this harmonious act in between them, which is different for each individual. And that impacts the perception, their perception of the environment. So today, you would know how to decode the brain's response to change. And I'm here exactly for that. I'm Dr. Sukmeet, and I'm a medical doctor by profession. As much as I've been a doctor for more than two and a half decades now, I was always very fond of neuroanatomy and neuroscience. And then my curiosity about mind-body connection led me to go ahead and learn psychology. And there, my mentor asked me to do NLP, that's Neuro Linguistic Programming. And NLP changed my life 360 degrees. 
I shed all those limiting beliefs and inhibitions that I was holding back. And today I'm an NLP master trainer. I went ahead and I did Gestalt psychology and I also became an emotional intelligence coach. And finally, I'm a professional certified coach from International Coach Federation from the US. So that's been my journey. Each one led to the other. And uh, I work very closely helping leaders of the organization to help their teams and the organization to decode the change and be comfortable with the same. While we move ahead, I want you to get acquainted with certain functions of the different parts of the brain. To begin with, the prefrontal cortex. Prefrontal cortex is supposed to be responsible for the rational and the logical thinking of the brain. The cognitive abilities, the decision making and the stress control ability. Next comes the hippocampus which is important for learning and memory. Habenula. Habenula moderates the behavior in an individual through these reward-associated hormones, which are dopamine and serotonin, which are the feel-good chemicals released in the body. And each time we are going through some change, the habenula gets activated when it is supposed to have a well-accomplished outcome and it kind of subsides and gets low when the outcome is not supposed to be a well-accomplished one. So this is the way it controls the behavior of an individual during change. Moving on to the etorhinal cortex, which is responsible for memory, navigation and perception of time. So it's technically the GPS of our brain. It has a lot of mental maps formed in your brain, which form due to all the assumptions, the beliefs, the values, the interpretations, the past experiences of an individual. And all of this give an individual a sense of belonging. This becomes their comfort zone, which they don't want to step out of. Moving on to the neurotransmitters, these send chemical messages from the neuron to the target cell. Next is the neuron, which are nerve cells, which transmit the impulses or signals all throughout the body. And last but not the least, the emotional center of the brain, that is the amygdala. This is that part of the brain which responds to anything that is new or different or sudden, unexpected, and it immediately poses it like a threat. Because the brain has a tendency to assume that anything that is new or different than usual is going to be the worst form of danger. That's been the belief. So this amygdala, the emotional center of the brain, is responsible for fright, flight, and freeze response of the brain. Change is generally inevitable. And since the outcome is unpredictable, this change causes a lot of anxiety. And this level, this intensity of anxiety depends on factors such as how well the change is justified, framed, or managed. That will decide the level of anxiety. So the moment there is any external stimuli, which is different than usual, the amygdala sends neurotransmitters to process this threatening stimuli. And within six seconds, within these very, very few six seconds, the body is flooded with increased blood flow and 
through the blood for cortisol and adrenaline, which are the stress hormones. What do these do? They prepare us to be ready to run by increasing the heart rate, by elevating the BP, blood pressure, increasing the energy levels through, through increasing the blood flow through all the muscles so that you're all geared up to run if required. That is what the adrenaline release does to the body. And each time the stimuli comes up, this is the pattern the amygdala follows. Because the impulse has directly gone to the amygdala. And when the amygdala transmits the impulse to the prefrontal cortex, until it reaches the prefrontal cortex, the anxiety levels have lowered down. Because the amygdala has effect has kind of subsided. So at one point of time, it could be either the amygdala or the prefrontal cortex which could be activated. Both cannot be activated at the same time. So the moment the prefrontal cortex receives the impulse, the effect of the amygdala subsides. Similarly, people, whenever we face difference in behaviors of other people, which is again different than usual, the brain acts in the same manner. The brain grows through the same changes and the amygdala uh, transmits the impulse and goes into the fr fright, flight, and freeze mode. And then what happens is you cannot adjust to the change in the behavior of somebody else. That is when the conflicts arise. And when these neuronal networks keep getting repeated again and again, they form a kind of a pattern in the brain. And when these patterns get repeated, they form a habit. The habits, it keeps getting repeated again and again. In spite of forming a habit, it becomes a behavior. And this behavior constantly, again and again, shapes up the personality of an individual. So what we see in this entire thing is, When we observe something with full attention and focus, the behavior gets reinforced. So attention continually reshapes the patterns of the brain. This is exactly what happens. So this neuronal network keeps getting repeated and repeated. So leaders of the organization can literally use this. It's very exciting, in fact. They can use this to help their people see positive and desired outcomes. Not focusing on the problems, they would rather focus on the solutions henceforth. That is what leaders can use it for. Now, we need not succumb to this amygdala drama always. So what do we do? We need to break the circuit. This fear circuitry has to be broken. How do you do that? Well, you have to step out of your comfort zone. You have to make a conscious effort to step out, which is not going to be easy because the brain again detects it like a change and it's going to hold you back. However, we could do that. And I've, if you remember, Three A's, it's going to be very helpful for you. Awareness, acknowledgement, and action. Talking about awareness, a simple practice of mindfulness, being aware, being aware of yourself, of your breath, being in the present moment. This conscious awareness is going to help you realize what is different suddenly in your body. And mind you, the body gives you every signal. Know your body well. The body is going to talk to you. You should be able to listen to it. As Amanda Blake says in her book, your body is your brain. So it's going to give you every signal. It's just that you have to be aware and notice those signals. And once you have become aware, 
acknowledge it don't deny it don't be in denial allow it to get processed once you have allowed it to get processed you have acknowledged it only then will you be able to label the emotion once you have labeled the emotion the impulse has moved from the amygdala to the prefrontal cortex because now you have reasoned it out and then the the level of the anxiety is almost subsided and last but not the least is action what can you do learn to reframe reframe your thoughts reframe your inner dialogue change your thoughts and that will change your life what you can do in such moments is think about a pleasant memory which would again start the transmission of all the good feel good hormones in your body dopamine serotonin and start showering it will start showering love within you for yourself for everything around you by the release of oxytocin so awareness acknowledgement and action is going to help you get out of the fear circuitry and move on to a more positive outcome now sometimes it so happens that stress descends on us and it pulls us back into the same circuit because that has been our comfort zone always there is familiarity there is certainty there and when you step out of your comfort zone everything is so uncertain you don't want to be there so the brain will always tend to pull you back but as i said you have to make a conscious effort to step out and repeatedly when you do this each time your brain holds you back you ask it to stop step out of your comfort zone and make that effort and when you do it repeatedly that becomes a pattern so make sure to act within those 6 seconds if you remember it takes just 6 seconds so you step out of your comfort zone in those 6 seconds and there will be no looking back you will be a master of your emotions and all the change that you can control will be in your hands i will leave you now with this quote by abraham maslow any given moment we have two options to step forward into the growth or to step back into safety the choice is yours my dear friends the choice is always yours so make sure you make the right choice thank you very much